Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and I'm here to talk about the DxO Nick collection, which is now up to version 6, and still one of the best and most creative software suites on the market. The Nick collection consists of eight different plugins, or modules. These include creative effect plugins like Nick Silver Effects, Color Effects, Analog Effects, and HDR Effects, together with image correction and enhancement tools, including Nick Define for noise reduction, Nick Sharpener for both capture sharpening and output sharpening, Nick Perspective for fixing image geometry and distortion, and Nick Viveza, which is like a powerful dodging and burning tool for color photography. So all eight plugins are installed as a single package, and you can launch them from within Lightroom or Photoshop. In fact, you get a dedicated Nick collection palette added to Photoshop, which offers shortcuts to the different plugin modules, recent presets and edits applied for each, and a collection of meta presets, which are like special effects using two Nick filters, not just one, both applied automatically. If you're working in Lightroom Classic, the process is slightly different, but just as easy. Here, when you send an image to one of the Nick plugins, Lightroom will ask you whether you want to edit a copy with the current Lightroom settings, the answer is yes, and what type of file you want to send. JPEGs are quick and dirty and don't take up much space, but the 16-bit TIFF file will give better results if you apply more extreme adjustments. Now normally, when you use a plugin filter to apply an effect, it's baked into the image pixels permanently. That's fine if you know the effect you want, but not so good if you decide you should have done it slightly differently later on. Photoshop has its own built-in solution because you can convert image layers into smart objects before you apply the filter. The Nook filters work fine with smart objects and when you're back in Photoshop, you can change your filter settings anytime you like. Lightroom does not have this feature, but DxO has a rather clever workaround. If you choose to work with the TIFF file format, the Nick plugins will offer a non-destructive TIFF option, which essentially includes the original image, the new image, and the processing instructions needed to achieve it. Later, you can go back and the filter settings you chose are still live, so you can change or add to them as much as you like. The only downside is that these TIFF files are twice the size of regular TIFFs. So until now, I've been describing these Nick tools as plugins, but actually they can be used as standalone programs too. You can launch them by double clicking their application icons, just as you would any other software. What's more, you can use them within programs that don't support regular Photoshop or Lightroom plugins. For example, in Capture One, they work perfectly well as external editors. Or if you're using DxO Photolab, you can launch the Nick plugins directly from the bottom toolbar. But that's enough about how you launch these tools. What do they actually do? It would take a long, long time to explain every option in depth. So I'll just take a quick tour through three of the most useful plugins, which are analog effects, color effects, and silver effects. These three alone offer a huge depth of creative potential and inspiration. Now, Analog Effects is a relatively recent arrival, added by Google when it had ownership of the Nick collection before TXO took it over. It's now been thoroughly integrated into the Nick family though, with a familiar workflow and interface. The best starting point here is the catalogue of preset effects in the left sidebar, where you'll find an incredible variety of looks. In fact, Analog Effects calls them cameras, not presets, because it doesn't stop at grain effects, light leaks, borders and textures, but also replicates the features, flaws and character of old cameras and lenses too. When you choose a preset or camera, it applies a set of filters and adjustments which you can then examine over in the right sidebar and modify at will. As well as basic adjustments, you can create all sorts of blur effects, Bokeh effects, multiple exposures, dust and scratches, multi-lens effects, and more. This is like a digital playground for retro lo-fi camera fans, though you can also create some quite refined vintage film looks too. Where analog effects is quite wild and wacky, color effects is more like a giant box of filters for photography. It's a little more serious, but even more powerful. As with analog effects, you can apply a series of different presets from the left sidebar and then check the right sidebar to see what filters have been used and adjust them or add to them as required. 
in practice, with color effects, you'll probably start from scratch and select just a filter or filters you need from the left sidebar. There are more than 50, and some are particularly useful, like the graduated neutral density filter, for example, or the color contrast range filter for enhancing color images. There really is a lot here to try out and have fun with. Now, thanks to its reputation as the best black and white tool bar none, SilverFX probably needs less explanation. Suffice to say, it follows the same pattern with preset effects in the left sidebar and manual controls on the right. Where SilverFX excels is in the depth and richness it brings to black and white images and the way its controls are adapted to the language and workflow of photographers rather than just being generic photo editing tools. So this is where I should stop. If I was to try to explain everything that the Nick Collection does, this would be a five hour video, not five minutes. But hopefully I've shown you enough to give you an idea of what it can do and how it could fit into your workflow. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.